Welcome back. It is no secret that our politics are increasingly polarized and frankly broken with the wings of both parties applying growing pressure on what is a disappearing middle. Politicians who achieve success in part because of their ability to appeal to the other side. They now find themselves struggling to win elections or even to be nominated by their own party. Joining me now are two former office holders who've experienced this changing political landscape. Former Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill, who lost her Senate seat last year as Missouri became more conservative. Former Republican Congressman Tom Davis of Virginia, who gave up his seat before the 2008 elections, as his district has become uh, a lot more liberal. Welcome to both of you. Uh, and I want to talk about that so-called so disappearing middle, because let's be frank here, impeachment is, is breaking Congress, as we know it for now. Uh, the center is who puts Humpty Dumpty back together again. Um, and yet it feels like this is going to be a lot harder this time. S uh, Senator McCaskill, I'll let you take the first swing at this. How does the center, and it, it, is it have to be an, it reassert itself to sort of fix the Senate? Well, first of all, I think the, the Senate was broken, Congress was broken before impeachment came along. Fair. Uh, my first year in the Senate, I voted on 306 legislative amendments. This year, there's fewer than 30. Mitch McConnell has presided over absolutely destroying Senate norms, from Merrick Garland to killing legislative debate. The Senate is no longer what it was, and the people of this country are going to have to be the ones politically to put pressure on this dysfunction and say, we want unity, we want stuff to get done, we want you to quit the partisan food fight. Tom Davis, there isn't a political constituency that rewards that right now. Not at all. In fact, we've devolved into basically parliamentary behavior in a balance of power structure, and it doesn't work. You remember that for about 80 percent of the House and a majority of the Senate, the only race that counts is the primary election. Uh, to these members, November is just a constitutional formality. The voters have sorted themselves into basically making most of these seats safe. Uh, the number of marginal seats has really decreased in each party, but they're the ones, of course, that decide who's the majority. What's interesting in our new poll is how, um, how certain some people are of their vote already. We asked this question about 2020. Certain to vote against Trump is already up to 48 percent. That's uh, it's up two points from when we last asked last month. Certain to vote for Trump is 34 percent. Depends on the nominee is 18 percent. And this is what I'd like to focus on for the rest of our conversation, because if this is the swing voter for this election and it looks like no swing voter that any of us have talked about in 30 years. This swing voter is uh, a male, younger, white. I want to show they they approve somewhat of the president's job rating. They'd prefer a Republican Congress over a Democratic Congress, but they believe the president did something wrong, even if they're not ready to impeach him. Senator McCaskill, this is a different type of, of swing voter than we're used to. Normally, it's the suburbs. Well, the suburbs are, are moved in one direction. You tried to appeal to these swing voters, and you had a hard time doing it. Is it culturally impossible for Democrats to, to reach out to these folks? I don't think it is, especially if uh, the candidates get back to focusing on what's pragmatic, practical, unifying the country, and the big one, health care. Yeah. The Republicans are in a bad position on health care. They have tried to take away the protections that people have really grown to be really guarding. They don't want that pre-existing condition protection gone. And I think if, in fact, the Democrats nominate someone who can talk about unity, yeah. talk about going after drug companies, talk about stabilizing health care costs, uh, then I think Donald Trump will no longer be president in January of 2021. Tom Davis, there's another fascinating aspect about this group of 18 percent, and it is they're more uncomfortable with Joe Biden than they are Bernie Sanders. In fact, Bernie Sanders scores fairly well with this group of voters. Um, and because another dynamic in them is they're not fully happy with the system as it was. I, I, is it possible that Sanders might be the best person to take Trump voters away from Trump? Well, I think it depends where you're talking about. Uh, look, I think this race is going to be a race to the bottom at any extent where people are holding their nose, a lot of swing voters and picking the lesser of two evils. You know, what the president has going for him right now is the lowest unemployment rate in, in 50 years and a stock market that's going uh, through the roof. So he's getting good results on the ground. He just passed a new trade agreement. Uh, that's going uh, good for him at this point in spite of everything else. And if the Democrats run against him on the economy, I think that's a tough sell at this point. 
you want to get to the middle to appeal to these swing voters and give them a reason, but the nomination process drives the Democrats left and the Republicans right, and that's the dilemma uh, that both parties face. Senator, what did you make of the debate the other night? Um, I, look, you could come to the conclusion over the last four or five debates that the party looks like they're arguing now more, they're moving toward the middle. Maybe that's because Buttigieg uh, is the guy that, that's getting traction in Iowa more so than, than Warren or Sanders. Do you see that as, how do, how do you view that development? Well, I saw um, a, a, a very recent survey among Democratic voters, and it was really interesting. They really don't like the idea of the government paying for college for rich people. Mm -hmm. uh, they really do, the majority of them, want to hold on to the option of private insurance if people want that. But they certainly want a government option also. So I think that where most Democratic voters are, are frankly closer to uh, Mayor Pete or Joe Biden or Amy Klobuchar mm -hmm. than they really are. The universality of the proposals that both Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are pushing. Tom Davis, would you advise Democrats to spend time wooing uh, Republicans like yourself? And I say this, I'm not presuming, meaning more centrist Republicans, more right of center Republicans. I'm not presuming where you are in, on, on President Trump personally, but a, a Republican like yourself. Absolutely, because in these swing states, it's really in the suburbs, your higher income suburbs, the Republicans have uh, been losing it. They lost in the midterms. But remember, the midterm election was more about putting a check on the president rather than giving him a blank check. And that's traditionally what we see in midterm uh, elections. I think these voters, when it comes into the presidential race, are really up for grabs and are going to make the difference over who carries these uh, swing states. Senator Claire McCaskill, Congressman Tom Davis, I guess formers on both of them, though, yeah. but um, uh, people who bring a reasonable conversation to a Sunday morning. Thank you both. Hope you enjoy you, your Chuck. holiday break. Thanks Happy for doing Hanukkah, this. Happy Hanukkah, Chuck. Thank you, Senator. Hello from Washington, I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.